Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Tech News. You got it, product review. A few months back, I reviewed the AmperTime 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate drop-in lead acid replacement battery, and it was a great performer at a fantastic price. I received quite a few comments in the meantime that folks want me to review their larger offerings. So today, we're gonna check out the 200 amp hour version and see, is it any good? Let's find out. Now this Amper Time battery is a 12 volt, 200 amp hour or 2560 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery using grade A cells, good for at least 4,000 cycles or 11 years if cycled daily. As for size and weight, it's approximately 21 by eight by nine at around 46 pounds. Now the BMS inside this Amper Time is a 100 amp or 1280 watt hours and that rate is for both charging and discharging, meaning you can pump 1,280 watts in and get 1,280 watts out. Now, as for the ability to series or parallel these batteries together, this supports a 4S, 4P configuration, which is four in series and then that four times in parallel for a maximum of 48 volts at 800 amp hours or 41 total kilowatt hours of capacity. That's more than what the average household in America uses in one day. Now, as for the quality of the case, this is an IP65 water resistant rated ABS plastic case. So you can leave this thing out in the weather and not worry about it. Now, as for the built-in protections, it does have overcharge, over discharge protection, as well as overcurrent and short circuit protection. While this does not have a low temperature cutoff feature, it does offer a high temperature protection. We're gonna test that here in a bit. This battery can be charged from 32 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, and that would be ambient temperature of the cells and discharge from minus four degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. As for other features, this does have a pair of nylon handles built in on both sides. It also comes with two pairs of metric M8 size bolts along with lock washers and these pretty cool little protective covers that you can put on the bolts to prevent an accidental short circuit. You also get a big packet of paperwork, including a really nice user manual. And as with all Amper Time batteries, the warranty is five years from the manufacturer, which is exceptional. And of course, we took the Amper Time 200 amp hour battery into our secret laboratory here, where we performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including, since this is only a battery, a single fisted Bang! battery capacity test. As you can see from the results of the battery capacity test, the Amper Time scored 210 amp hours out of 200 or 105% of rated capacity. Now, this might sound unusual, but it actually is not unusual because most of these higher quality 200 amp hour batteries are actually made with 210 amp hour cells. So while it does say 200 amp hours on the side of the case, it's really 210. So you're getting that extra 5% capacity for free. The Amper Time 200 amp hour battery has a 100 amp BMS, which is 1,280 watts. That means you can put 1,280 watts in or take 1,280 watts out, or 100 amps at 12.8 volts, which is the nominal voltage of these lithium iron phosphate batteries. So of course I have my Victron shunt installed over here. You can just see it over here by these wires. We're gonna go ahead and charge and discharge this battery at its maximum rate, see what happens. Now the first test is gonna be how much can you pull out of the battery before it shuts down? Now, this is where we actually test its surge capability because just because the BMS is limited to 100 amps, it usually allows two or 300 amps for a short period of time. But we want to find out how hard can you push this if you're running an air conditioner or something that has a real high startup load for a few seconds. Can the battery handle it without overheating or breaking or anything like that? So let's do that test first. Okay, we're at 123 amps. Now we're at 200 amps. Let's go ahead and keep increasing it. 300, 350, and then it shut down right around 350. All right, so it looks like it can handle 350 amps before shutdown. 
Now, what about extended runtime? So what I like to do is try to test how high can you push it for five minutes before it shuts down? Let's try 300 amps at first, and if that doesn't make it, we'll go ahead and keep turning it down until we get the amount of amps it can run for five minutes without shutting down. All right, there we are at 300 amps. Let's see how long it can handle it. Now that beeping is because it is pulling a lot of voltage from the battery. It is down to 11.3 volts, and the inverter doesn't actually like that. That goes to show that the BMS itself is struggling with this load, which is, of course, it should be at 300 amps. Well, just continue to go and see how long we can make it. So there we have it, one minute, 11 seconds. It thermally shut down. So at 300 amps, after about a minute, the battery itself overheated. So since the battery completely shut down, that means we went into thermal overload on the battery. The battery got too hot, so it completely cut off the BMS, and now you have to wait for the battery to cool down before it'll come back on. So let's go ahead and reset the timer and see how long does it take for the battery to cool down. Now the temperature in here is about 66 degrees Fahrenheit, so right around room temperature. Hopefully it won't take more than 15 minutes or so, but let's see. Well, look at what we have here. Just over four minutes it took to cool down. The battery is back online at 13.3 volts. Okay, since we had thermal shutdown at 300 amps, let's try 200 and see if we can run the five minutes. Okay, there we have it, 200 amps. Let's see how long she'll go. So when I say this is overheating, I mean the BMS is overheating and shutting down. I don't mean the battery itself is getting hot. Let me show you what kind of temperatures I'm getting. It's right here in the middle of the battery, 80 degrees. Top of the battery, 78. Positive terminals, 108. Negative terminals, 111. These are all very reasonable temperatures for a battery that just overheated, so. Just waiting the another minute or so to start this thing back up. There we are at 150 amps. Let's go ahead and start the timer and see how long can it go at 150 amps discharge rate. Here we are, five minutes at 150 amps. We didn't have any issues. It seems like the battery is able to handle that load for at least five minutes. Now the amper time is discharged well below 50% capacity, so let's go ahead and we're gonna reset the clock. And now we're gonna go ahead and test how fast can we charge it. Now it has a 100 amp ability to charge. My ability to charge above 100 amps is pretty limited, so I can do 110 amps tops with my equipment. So let's just go ahead and run it at 110 amps for at least five minutes. Make sure it can charge at at least 100 amps. There we are, about 112 amps. And there we have it, we're crossing the finish line, 112 amps of charging at five minutes, no problems. So the 200 amp hour amper time battery with the 100 amp BMS seems to be working as expected as it passed all the tests with flying colors. So what do I think about the amper time 200 amp hour battery? Well, just like the 100 amp hour version, there's really nothing to dislike about it. It's a solid battery with a capacity 5% above rated, uses grade A cells, quality BMS, lets you push the limits, but it's still safe if you decide to go too far. You can do a 4S4 4P configuration, so you can make very large capacity 48 volt systems pretty dirt cheap. And that brings me to the best part, price. Because you're getting a very high quality battery at a very cheap price. Now, can you get no-name ABCXYZ batteries cheaper than this? Yes, you can, but you're gambling with your money and possibly your life. What's inside is high quality. You get a five-year warranty, and they sell thousands and thousands of these batteries, and I've never heard of reported issues with any of them. So while you might pay 50 bucks or something more for this over an XYZ brand battery, you know you're actually getting something quality here for your money. So of course, I do have one major gripe with this battery, and that's the fact that there is no low temperature charging protection. I mean, granted, if you're actually using the battery, the cells are unlikely to go below freezing if you keep the battery in an insulated area, but I really don't understand why this brand and so many other brands refuse to spend the extra $5 in parts to make it so that these things won't accidentally charge below freezing. Now, again, they do offer a five-year warranty, so if you end up frying the battery because you charged it up below freezing, they're gonna have to replace it. So that is to your advantage. If you do mess up this battery by charging it below freezing, you can probably get another one through the warranty without much of a hassle. And the good thing about doing that is that over time, it's gonna force these companies to start putting low temperature cutoffs inside of them. I'm telling you, 
It's only a couple dollars in parts. I'm not sure why they don't do it. It would be very cheap protection for you and it would cause probably a lot less warranty returns. If you're worried about blowing up this battery after you get it because you charged it below freezing, there is a solution because Amper Time sells this exact same 200 amp hour battery with a 100 amp BMS that's heated. And you're going, oh, that's fantastic. I'll just buy that one instead. Do know that it costs 50% more than this. So for to put a heating pad inside and have it run automatically at certain temperatures costs quite a bit more money than just having a low temperature cutoff inside. So if you really need a heated battery and you don't mind paying the premium, I will have a link to that battery in the description below along with a coupon code that'll knock a few bucks off. Now what's the use case for these batteries? Obviously you're not gonna drop this into a car. These 100 amp BMSs cannot start vehicles. So don't buy one of these batteries thinking you're gonna start a car or something with it, you're not. You could probably run a small trolling motor on a boat, but that's about it. Remember, if you're gonna run a constant load on this, it has to be under 100 amps or 1280 watts. Now the recommended inverter size for a single 200 amp hour battery is gonna be around 2000 watts. Now I know the output's limited to 1280 watts, but you still want a 2000 watt inverter to handle the surge. So if you're plugging in an air conditioner or a refrigerator or something and it's got a startup surge, you wanna get a slightly larger inverter than the battery can handle. And we've also seen that this can handle surges for up to 300 amps for short periods of time, no problem. So it doesn't hurt to get a larger inverter. Now, of course, you get multiple of these batteries, hook them in parallel for more amps. And that will allow you to start up much larger loads, run a much bigger inverter. So say you got two of these batteries, that would safely allow you to run 2,500 watt loads constantly. And in that case, I'd suggest a three or 4,000 watt inverter. I do have some inverter models on my product page at hobotech.tv if you're shopping around for inverters. In fact, that 3000 watt Sun Gold Power inverter charger is what I use in all my testing. So I charge and discharge all my batteries with that inverter. It's very good. I've been using it for well over a year now. Hasn't failed me at all. Now, what about charging options? I know there's a lot of rumors going around that say if you have a lithium battery, you have to replace everything in your RV. You can't use your old solar controller. You can't use your old battery charger. It's just not going to work. You're not going to be able to charge the battery all the way. That's absolutely false in most cases. Unless you got some kind of really super old or really customized system, if you have a simple charger in your RV built in the last 30 years, as long as it can output 14.4 volts, you can charge this battery completely. It doesn't have to be a special lithium charger. Just be aware if you do kill this battery completely dead to 0% charge, the BMS will shut off and you'll need to jumpstart it back to life from another 12 volt source if you don't have a lithium-based solar controller or a lithium-based battery charger. Those will automatically re-jump the battery once it detects a zero voltage situation, so you won't do it manually. Most of the time, your inverter is gonna shut off long before this thing hits 10 volts and dies. I've never had a problem with this. I've run several lithium batteries in my van, and I've discharged them down to zero accidentally a couple times. They actually didn't shut off, so it wasn't a problem. Product price. So for the Ampertime 200 amp hour battery, the retail price is typically $649. But of course, being Hobotech, I negotiated a $30 discount code with Ampertime that will knock the price of this down to only $619. That might sound like a lot, but think about it. You're getting 200 amp hours for $619. That's less than $310 for 100 amp hours. That's a really, really cheap price for a lithium battery. Now, in order to get this discount, you have to use the link below in the description of this video along with the discount code HOBOTECH at checkout. This is only gonna be 24 cents per watt hour. So you can build a pretty big, very cheap battery bank with very reliable parts and a reliable BMS for only 24 cents a watt hour. So if you've been waiting to take the plunge into lithium batteries for your RV, it's very unlikely prices are gonna dip much more than this under the current market conditions. Just like those old beer commercials used to say, it's Miller time, it's Amper time. And I'm gonna mention again, since winter is coming, and I missed that meme since the show is over, there is a heated version of this battery available for a significant increase in price. But if you prefer that instead of this one, I have the same discount code will knock $30 off that battery as well. 
and I'll put the link and code in the description for the heated version of this if that is what you really need. And Amper Time being as cool as they are, they're still offering the same discount code that knocks a few percent off of everything on their entire store page. So if you want a different size battery or one of their chargers or anything on the website, I'll have another discount code in the description that's a blanket code that works across their entire website. So if you're interested in the Amper Time 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate drop-in lead acid replacement battery, the link and discount code are gonna be in the description of this video below. I'm also gonna put a link here at the bottom of the screen with a QR code that you can enter in on a mobile device that'll take you on over to Amper Time's store page where you can check out their line of products, including the Amper Time 200 amp hour battery. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. If your search for a soldier is a pain in the neck, go to YouTube and watch Hobo Tech, cause he's the best in this, and he's a probing that. He's even been probing Odin his cat. If you want to get all the soldiers back, go to Hobo Tech. Yeah! RV Golf Guy, Von Rob, Brian Lewis, John Stacey, Soroka, Dr. Steve Eisenhower.